Welcome to the biggest yeast shootout ever. In this video, we're tasting through and rating the 16 meads from my yeast shootout series. I started this series about two years ago and finished my eighth video recently. All of these meads feature the exact same base recipe and they have a variety of yeast involved. The goal of the yeast shootout series is to test the differences that each yeast provides with the same recipe. At the end of the video, a winner would normally be declared. At the end of this video, we are going to say our top four favorite yeast for this recipe. It's important to note that each yeast was treated with the same amount of yeast nutrient, Fermate O in this case, and fermented at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I did not attempt to optimize the nutrient needs or fermentation temperatures for each. That's going to be a whole nother video in the future. I want to also note that these meads are varying ages. This could undoubtedly change some results, but we're going to continue with the test regardless. I want to give a huge shout out to the four people who really helped in this tasting. I sent out three boxes of meads to Larry, Carlos, and Matthew. They all taste tested and gave notes for each mead. I also want to shout out BC, or doing the most, for helping me in this tasting as well. He did a blind taste test with me and gave notes for each. Here are all the yeasts featured today. Rather than talk about each yeast individually, I'm going to show you some pictures of information for each. You can pause and read if you'd like to. There's just too much information for me to talk about them. So now let's go ahead and hop into the tasting and results. Welcome to the results portion of this video. So we're gonna quickly run down all of these um, meads and talk about kind of what we taste tested with each. I've got Carlos and Larry and Matthew and BC are doing the most uh, with me. So thank you guys for your time. Let's go ahead and jump in with number one and you have the master list now, so you can kind of see what's what. But um, Carlos, did you have any quick notes about number one? Uh, for number one, uh, the biggest things that I got from it were light citrus on the aroma and slight banana uh, aroma. Um, and the taste, uh, just a small hint of acetone, a little thin, and I got pecan, like nuttiness behind it. Okay. Larry, what you got? Um, so the big thing was there, it was a little d on the darker side in terms of like all of them. Um, it was really dry. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're all dry for the, they should be all dry for the purposes of the test. And I had a little bit of like a caramel, like candy ish thing going on. Okay. With it. I had same notes for a lot of them actually. But. Okay. Matthew. Yeah, I'd say like Larry, this was one of the ones that kind of fell into a group of really s pretty similar things. So I think I agree with the notes that, that Carson Larry gave. I'll just leave it at that for this one. Sweet. BC, do you have any notes on that one? I thought this one was a little brighter than some of the ones that fell into that like toffee, chocolatey, caramelly kind of realm. Uh, 
this was one of the ones that I preferred over the other ones, but it, there wasn't like anything to write home about either. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any, I mean, my big notes for, like you guys were saying, they were falling in the same camp. So they all were kind of this warm, uh, a lot of them were a warm orange blossom character. They did have like a caramel note that was kind of interesting. Um, yeah, all right, so that was number one, which was the Lavin Borgevin RC212. Let's go to number two, which is the Red Star Cuvée. Uh, Carlos. Uh, for this one off the aroma, uh, it seemed almost like uh, clover honey, uh, even though, like you said, all of them were orange blossom honey. Like I got clover notes off of, like clover honey notes off of it. Um, the aroma was also a little woody and fruity. And then for the, for the uh, taste, uh, I got banana peels, light pecans, and ripe pineapple. Larry? On the nose, I got a little less alcohol. It was a little, it looked a little darker, and I said that it was a little less complex and it didn't linger as long as the first one. Matthew? Yeah, I, I agree with those notes. I felt like number two was kind of similar to number one, but I, it, there was a little bit of perceived sweetness in the first one for me, and in the second one, that was gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt like this one, like all my notes are about how it's flabby and watery and lacking tannin. <laughs> <laughs> it's clear that I didn't really care for this one. I, I did talk about, you know, it's got that floral quality to the honey on the nose and a little bit of those toffee notes we've been talking about. But again, like this one, I wasn't like blown away. I didn't get a lot of muted um, bright aroma or character from it, but I did get a bigger body, which was interesting. Um, I felt like it was bigger than the first one. Maybe I'm, I don't know, I could be wrong. Um, so <laughs> that's the key babe. Um, the number three is the Lavin K1 V1116. Carlos. So for this one, again, I got the clover note, clover honey notes off of the aroma, and it smelled a little bit more buttery than the first two did. Or out of all of them, it's, it had it had like a buttery aroma to it, and then for the taste, it was clean, but dry. Again, they all were, uh, and this one I got uh, like it was just a slight hint of oak in there. Larry, um, this one again, I noted the appearance was a little darker than the the other ones. Uh, for flavor, I just put less aggressive. Uh, it had a little bit of like a subtle, some, some of the subtle like toffee on the, on the back end. Matthew? Yeah, I found this one really, it was really dry, really clean. Um, I, you know, there wasn't some of the various like bitterness or hotness that I encountered with some of the other ones. This was, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, echoing what Carlos was saying, there's, you know, he said that it might be oak there. I specifically noted that there was like a dark, toasty note on the finish mm -hmm. like on the exhale of this one uh, but i also uh, this was one of i think two where i noted that i was picking up something like chocolatey or milk mm. chocolatey in the nose mm. and so yeah, it kind of jives with what they were saying i got like a little spice like a warm warm spice note to it um, i perceived that in that way um so let's k1 v1 let's go to number four which is the qa23 <laughs> This, this one was interesting for me because uh, I got off the aroma, uh, I got blood orange and a little bit of nuttiness. Uh, and for the taste, I got blood orange, uh, slight pith, and very light tannin is what I got for taste on that. I was not very nice about this one. Um, <laughs> on the aroma, I put floor cleaner. And then... Uh, for flavor, it was like herbal, uh, juniper, rosemary, hot. It was hot mm -hmm. and uh, kind of a pine thing going on. I was not a fan. Yeah, I'm just going to second Larry on this one. It was it was hot. It was, um, I think, you, what did you say, floor cleaner or acetone or something? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I won't. I, I wrote down a different chemical, but I agree. <laughs> Yeah, I my only note about the aroma was that it smelled like acetone. Uh, and I did, in the flavor, Carlos, I picked up some of that pithiness that you're talking about. Uh, there was kind of a gritty tannin to it, not like a, uh, not, not something that I typically associate 
with tannin like on its own yeah <laughs> usually it's a thing that comes with a higher tannin so it was like kind of watery but kind of gritty at the same time uh and i didn't pick up much honey character in it either no i got a lot of i said grassy for the aroma had that kind of mm -hmm. like bright and then um the piney i think larry said pine as well was just like very prevalent and also wrote down leather i don't know why i think i got some kind of weird warm note mm. in there um, all right, that was the QA23. Let's go to number five, which is the Red Star Premier Rouge. So for this one, I got on the aroma citrus, sugar maple, and pear, mm. uh, which was which I came out of nowhere. It was on the exhale. Like, I got the pear, and I was like, that's, uh, like, I, we literally got fruit. So I ran in there, and I was like, man, for real? And yeah, it was def I, I definitely got pear off of the aroma. Huh. Uh, for taste... I got bready, light citrus, orange, medium, light or light to medium body, and banana peel. Yeah, this one was pretty similar to me, at like a lot like the first three, um, more in that realm than the than four was. Uh, I got a little bit of that candy thing, a little bit of ethanol on the nose, but not like crazy. And then. Um, I, I liked this one when I was, you know, picking my top four, this was in the running. So. Yeah. I, I agree with Larry on this one. It was pretty similar to one and two for me, which were RC two one two and the, the cuvee. And, um, but it, it was fairly smooth and it wasn't as neutral as, as the K one V eleven sixteen was, but, um, uh, it will, it didn't make my top, once but it was also in the running this one i have a lot of notes about toffee caramel like werther's originals mm. kind of mm. aromas uh in the the flavor profile it was nutty i felt like there was like a, mm -hmm. like a macadamia or almost like a nutella kind of like something in there but also I was picking up a metallic note, mm. like a sucking on interesting on aluminum foil kind of thing. Yeah, I, I did not have any, uh, I did, guess I didn't perceive a lot in this one. I thought it was pretty mellow. I don't know, I got a little zest like side. I think you guys hit the good notes. Um, we're gonna keep rocking those as number, that was the Premier Rouge. We're gonna go down to number six, which was um, the Omega Sundew. <laughs> <laughs> so this one was, this one uh, threw me for a loop as well because um, I got a uh, floral with notes of Starburst candy. Like you open a bag of Starburst <laughs> and I was like, that smells like Starburst candy, just like a mix of Starburst. Uh -huh. I was like, yeah, that's, that's exactly, what it's, exactly what it smells like. Um, then I got thin. Uh, I, got, I could get the honey character even though it was dry, so I did like that one. Uh, uh, I got white grape. Hair and lingers in the mouthfeel, and this I think this one would have been really good if, with just a little bit of acidity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said um, on the nose, I wasn't really getting a whole lot. It didn't smell like much, but um, it it are it did have a little bit of perceived like acidity and sweetness to it. I got a couple of like like lighter like berry type notes which makes a lot of sense now <laughs> and it, it, it you know overall just a lot less like toffee caramel stuff like i was getting on some of the others yeah i laughed when i saw what the, that this was sundew because my notes i just had fruity with like five question marks i was like <laughs> it was really really different than the you know the, the the ones i tried up to that point um but that that bag of starburst is an interesting description it's very much like a mixed fruit like you know, like the fruit cocktail that comes in a can and like heavy syrup. Mm -hmm. and long, I, I don't know if you guys ate that stuff, but um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was. Well, yes, I am a child of the 80s. <laughs> yes, it was It was out there. Uh, but but I, I, I mean, I liked it. I, I could see this. Um, I could see this working for the right kind of brew. Mm -hmm. So I'm not getting as much of those notes, even trying it like without mm -hmm. having palate fatigue. But I, I'm still picking up what I wrote down, which is candied orange, yep. that like mm. orange peel that's been baked with sugar. That's really prominent. I'm with Larry on the aroma. I, I just wrote honey bear honey. <laughs> like it's got a very like, you know, you go to the Mexican restaurant and they give you the honey for the like sopapillas. 
It's got mm. kind of like real basic, but like sweet honey profile. But it was, it's all like pithy orange on the palate. Yeah, this one's very bright. I got a lot of brightness from it, especially on the actual palate. It feels like um, that, that orange character is obviously prominent. Something that, that Sundu yeast, I think is promoting. I sure. mean, it's theoretically going to push that. That was number six. Let's go to number seven. We're dipping our toes into some beer yeast. <laughs> this is the yeah. Safale WB06. So this one, I was really, it was it was in that running for where it was in the top four that I picked, uh, and I got the mesquite like off the room. I got mesquite honey, uh, cardamom, coriander, and like a buttery slash butterscotch. And then for the taste, I was semi-sweet, honey character. And then again, I got walnut, nutty, buttery that came off of that. What number are we on? <laughs> yeah, seven. Uh, I'm asking the same question. We're He's describing seven. something different than I had. We're on yeah, seven. Mine was way, way different. So yeah. this one I mark, um, and this is the only one I mentioned this for. My bottle was pretty low. I think this is one of the ones that leaked. Um, on the nose, I got straight up artificial grape candy and <laughs> after i got that i could not not get that in a bunch of the other ones that looked like this one because this one was one of the lighter like really light colored ones um like there were a few that were almost like water clarity and, and color wise um on the taste i got some of that same thing that i was smelling um and then this weird, like, lingering aftertaste that I really don't even know how to describe. I got to do this one again. <laughs> so it's really sweet, and it's like corn or something. It's like really strong corn. I get a tortilla vibe with this. Tortilla, like yeah, tortilla. Corn like tortilla. Corn tortilla. Like huh. Rios or something. I, I really liked this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's good too. Um, I, I, for the aromas, I wrote that I'm picking up like big orange blossom characters. Like when I smelled it, it almost smells like fake orange. Mm -hmm. Like it's such a strong character. It is very sweet <laughs> for something that's allegedly dry. Um, curious what the hydrometer would say about that. Uh, I like the tannin profile on it too. I think it. I think it hangs around just long enough. Mm. Oh. I enjoyed this one. Yeah, this one ranked higher uh, for me. This is my least favorite by far. Oh, the the corn tortilla thing is <laughs> threw you off. Really strong. Yeah. Um, all right, we're gonna keep going down the beer territory. Uh, this is number eight. Is a saison style ale yeast from Lalamond. So for so for this one on the uh, aroma, I had acetone along with tropical notes, and it was perfumey. So I don't know, like if the, if the acetone was kind of make it seem like it was a perfume, but uh, just imagine walking in the old Dillard's and the perfume counter out there, and that's I was like, oh. So this one was my least favorite one. Uh, then again, I, thin plain orange or. Uh, thin, plain, orange peel, and uh, orange pith is what I got for it. Um, I got a lot of I, – I, I don't know now Now that you say acetone, maybe I should have looked for that, but I got heavy alcohol on the nose for this one. This was another one of the light-colored ones, if I'm looking at it correctly, um, which is weird because I, I put that it had some of that toffee like – flavor that I was getting on some of the darker ones. I ranked this one pretty low, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt th this one I, it was kind of middle of the pack for me. Um, I I think I pretty much agree with Carlos's description. I did get a, the, the kind of orange notes at the end, and it was, you know, a little bit of acetone, but mostly pretty clean. Yeah, on the aromatics, I was picking up that, like, toasty, burnt sugar, vanilla kind of thing that we get in the other ones. I'm with Carlos specifically about the flavor. I wrote that it was hollow. Like I kind of felt like it peaked like at the beginning and at the end, but in the middle, it just like dipped down into <laughs> nothingness. It was, I've never experienced that with a, a traditional mead before. Uh, so it was very interesting how 
vacuous. This <laughs> one, mint palette. It was. feels like it zapped away all of the honey <laughs> character from it. Like it was yeah. like I would not. I was not a fan. This was, I think, the lowest score I had, and I wrote in big capital letters, weak. <laughs> it's like, it just is not impressed. Um, all right, let's go. We're still in the beer world. We're, and this is number nine. This is the Sapphire US 05. So this one, uh, for Aroma, I got floral, soapy, and orange. And then for the uh, taste, it was thin. Again, I got that orange peel. I don't know if I, like, off of number eight, I don't know if it just kept carrying over. I had to wash my mouth a couple of times and I was like, you know, it just doesn't seem right. Uh, Cause like I said, I got that orange and then or the soapy and, and then like orange peel behind it. I was like, it's like soap to me. Uh, but I also got like a, a banana peel from it as well. This one for me was really similar to the last one um, in terms of like everything except um, on the nose, it, it felt a little more muted is what I, what I put. And then I got a little bit more acidity from it on the palate. But other than that, flavor wise, it was similar to the last one. Yeah. I felt like this one was one of the cleaner, you know, sort of let the honey come through. Um, there's just a little bit of bitterness on the finish. Um, but this was, this was kind of one of the highest rank ones for me. Are we saying we, we said what it is, right? Yeah. It's a yeah. uh, US 05. Yep. Yeah, on the on the around on the aromatics, I was getting like the same vanilla, nutty, almond, chocolatey thing as we've talked about uh, ad nauseum. I I thought that the finish on this was really long, and I also wrote that it was minerally. I don't know if those mm. two things were playing together to like draw out the finish on it, uh, but I like the tannin structure on it. I like that dry finish yeah. that Matthew talks about. That like. I don't know. That's, I felt like this one was was appreciable compared to some of the others yes, that we yeah. had up until. I would agree. Point. Yeah, all of your notes, and then I did <laughs> think that the, I was okay with the body on it. Um, it did have, like I said, a long finish. It just took a while to dissipate. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I thought they used to pretty well with this. It obviously, didn't destroy the honey character like the previous one. Um, number ten is the Red Star Premier Blanc. So this was another one that was on the lighter side, which. You know, hearing that everything was orange blossom, I was like, there's no way everything's orange blossom. Because uh, this one, again, you know, being on the lighter side, I was like, this is mesquite honey. You know, I got the mesquite honey, that fermented mesquite honey that came across. I uh, also got smoky, butter, vanilla, and pine for the all the aromas. And then for the taste, I got orange. It was a little weedy. Um, butterscotch mm -hmm. definitely got the alcohol that came through on it. And then I also have orange citrus on there as well. I think this is where I started going off the deep end with the grape candy thing. Because <laughs> um, from here on out, I feel like all of the lighter ones to me had that sort of smell to it. And uh, this one was a little bit harsher than some of the other ones that um, came a little earlier. But apparently I didn't hate it because it's ranked a little higher than some of, some of the ones we did just a minute ago. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this one too. And I... I it felt like it's fairly clean overall. There's some sort of fruitiness to it that, that that's, I don't think it's just orange blossom honey, but it's an interesting, really interesting one. Yeah. All my notes are about how orangey this mm -hmm. one is. Like orange blossom on the nose, like the nose was juicy and fresh and bright. And then in the, the flavors I just wrote, orange juice, pithy Kool-Aid. Like there's a real <laughs> yeah. like orange, like tang kind of orange flavor in there. Mm -hmm. I think you guys have hit all my notes on that. The only thing I noted was I said hibiscus e brightness, but I'm not picking that up as much now. So I'm wondering if that was a tail end of something else yeah. coming through as well. Um, all right, we're going to keep trucking along. So we're continuing in the Red Star category for you Red Star fans out there. Um, this is the Red Star Premier Cote de Blanc, which I don't think I said that right. <laughs> Yeah. Comment below if you know how to. No, I think somebody it. did correct me already, and I, I'm going to keep. I'm sticking to my guns on this one. It's a cote de blanco. <laughs> yeah, like a cape. Right, so, uh, what you got, Carlos? Let's <laughs> 11, all right. Um, for this one, I have the aroma. I got walnut and woody, uh, like, a, like a Hungarian oak. Like, there's something that came a little sweet behind it, like Hungarian oak does. Um, 
but then the taste i got sugar maple like it was a sugar maple uh peat like well like from scotch you get that mm -hmm. peatiness on the exhale that's what i got as well and then under ripe pear hmm. so for aroma on this one i put that it was pretty similar to the last one but and apparently i wasn't confident about this i said maybe a slight vanilla note and then for flavor apparently i just put almost identical to seven <laughs> i don't remember what i wrote for seven but well seven was the one i hated because it was big big time corn flavor and this one was corn flavor but not as much as seven mm. Mm. So I'm I, I'm with you, Larry. They were very similar. I didn't really have a lot to say about this one. I, I, I apparently I picked up like a Hershey chocolate kind of note, like a milk chocolate. That's interesting. There's a lot of chocolate vibe coming from you. No, I don't know. That that I didn't really have a lot to say about this one. So clearly, I was not like blown away. I had one note that uh, what you guys said kind of, and then um, there's a perfumey finish. Is was interesting about this one. I felt like it had a really like interesting floral. Yeah, I did write that big floral finish. Um, that was number 11, which was the Cote de Blanc. Cote de Blanc. Um, number 12 is the Mangro Jacks M05. So this one, I definitely got the orange blossom honey notes on the aroma and, you know, get with the, some citrusy notes behind it as well. And then, like of course, right off of the, the taste, I also got the orange orange peel, citrus, and then uh, I have uh, watermelon rind, oh, which, which confused, like, it was interesting, and it made it, to me, a little bit more complex, but it, uh, that's what added the kind of bitterness to it, but in a good way. I didn't write a whole lot for this one, but I can see... This was the point where I had started to put them into like two categories. There were the lighter colored ones and the darker colored ones. And the, the darker ones, the ones that were closer to like um, an amber color, had more of a candy thing. And the, um, the, and that, that, that was what I got off of this one. Yeah, this, this for me was one of the cleaner, more transparent ones. You can taste a little bit of dry sort of orange blossom honey character. Um, but it was, it was, uh, you know, didn't have some of the less desirable flavors that that show up in some of the other ones. Some of the the bitterness or the, um, you know, the those hotter flavors. Um, so this this was a high ranking one for me. It was nice and smooth and pleasant. Yeah, I'm really curious to see actually seeing. I didn't know this because we just revealed the names, but you know, there's this theory that we have that the um, Mangrove Jacks like uses K1V 1116 mm -hmm. as this, so I'll have to go back after the video and compare these two and see uh, how similar they are. I'm really mm -hmm. curious about that. Yeah, we were having that same conversation earlier. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, really, the only thing of note that y'all didn't mention is I was picking up I I was picking up a big Nutella note. <laughs> Like it smells like chalky. We should say he had a chocolate bar in between. I mean, he was you, you would think that I was like <laughs> palate cleansing with a, like a Hershey bar, but it smells like that like chalky Nutella kind of smell. Hmm. You know, I, I don't, I don't taste it in there, but I smell it on the nose. But yeah, it's it's nice. It's creepy. Mm -hmm. It's a little thing, but I had it. You said a um, nutty and like there was like a vanilla like note that was kind of riding around in there um but i i did like this one this one ranked very high without spoiling this one ranked high um 13 is the Safail so4 so this one i got again i got the orange blossom honey uh orange peel some smokiness but then i also had notes of carrot blossom in the aroma um mm. I don't know if it was because I was sniffing honey earlier, and so it, like everything was kind of in the nose still, uh, but it smelled like carrot boss honey. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for the, the taste, I got dry citrus peel with slight pith, floral, spiced, and acidic. Mm. So for this one, it, this was, again, one of the lighter ones. So, I, again, I put great candy, and I, I, I wish I still had these bottles to go back and, and do that, but I'm, they're not with me. Um, the only thing that was different about this one is I, I noted that I actually had a little bit of CO2 still in solution. It was a tiny bit pedaling. And um, 
it was also a little hot, uh, which seeing when this one was made compared to some of the other ones, that makes sense. I got a little bit of, I'm just going to add to what the, what Carlos and Larry said, instead of repeat, I got a little bit of perceived sweetness on this one. This was the, the third one that I got just, this one was just a really small hint of the corn tortilla flavor. Um, but aside from that, otherwise it was pleasant. I'm really curious about this corn tortilla. I, I picked it up. I picked it up before with this, with this honey. It's something about it. It just, there was it one is, you gave me at your house where I tasted it. Yeah, time, I'm so glad you said that now, <laughs> Matthew, because I like, I've said it before. People are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, now I feel confirmed. <laughs> and it's the, the, it's WB, the, it's the, the lighter WB06. color honey one. Yeah. The WB06 was really big time. Did you think of anything so sense? weird? Uh, I have a lot of notes about how fruity and like the berry kind of flavors uh-huh. that are in there. I also remarked that it had a nice tight floral structure. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> apparently, <laughs> <laughs> apparently that meant something. Sip a saver card. <laughs> apparently, thirteen meads in. That was important to write down. So, wow. <laughs> I did not write that down, but. <laughs> I, I wrote something, I said kind of beerish, which I don't know why my brain went to there, but it feels like it's, maybe it was the, a little bit of yeastiness in there or something mm-hmm. interesting that like pointed to that. Oh, I said hoppy too. I don't know why. Oh yeah, brain, I remember you saying hoppy. This one had like a brightness that was kind of interesting. So I don't know. All right, here's number 14. We just finished 13, which was the SO4. Number 14 is... Um, just the cleanest Everybody's one. Favorite. Everybody loves it. The Lalvin EC1118. What you got for us, Carlos? So for this one on the aroma, I got alcohol and lemongrass. And then for taste, I got watery, alcohol, and plain. I got ethanol and a little acetone on the nose. Um, this was one of the lighter colored ones. I got kind of an herby thing on, on the palate and uh with a little bit of that caramel but overall it was i it was still a little hot or at least that's what i put down which is crazy if it was made in july of 2020 <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah from for me this was just dry orange blossom honey and it's totally funny to see it's ec 1118 it's what what they all say it is it's not the most interesting but it did the job it made alcohol <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of like the Cliff's Notes version of what I wrote. Yeah. Mine says it's a classic mead. And then I wrote Chaucer's out to the side. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and my flavor notes say bland, muted, boring. Yeah, you guys have said all the same things. Bland was my key there. And I, I'm going to put it up on the screen right now. But the, I was looking at the notes for these earlier. But the, the little chart that shows you like what you're supposed to perceive, it is the lamest looking chart I've ever <laughs> seen. There's no... I'll send it to you guys later. It is arguably the funniest thing. All right, we got two left here. <laughs> oh, We've man. got number uh, 15. This is Lauvin D47. Carlos. So hearing that is D47 actually surprises me because it's one of my favorite yeast to use. And normally when I do, I don't get this. So it, you know, I'm, I'm shocked. But for the aroma, I got walnut shells and cotton. Wow which was really weird to me. And then for the taste, I got pith, sour, dry, walnut, and stale with a quick, with a little thing next to it said possibly oxidized. This one on the nose, I got something herbal. And I, th- I remember this one vividly because I, I sat there with the glass for probably five, six minutes, smelling it, trying to figure out what I was getting. It was almost like a mint thing, like some, like a cooling something on, on the just on the nose. And yeah. then the only real note that I put mm-hmm. on the flavor was herbal and lingering. Like this one stuck around for a while. And this one was interesting for me because this was the one bottle I had that had a bunch of sediment in it. I don't know if that means much. Um, the I guess the thing I'd add to the the notes from Carlos and Larry is just, I got a little bit of bitterness, but um, I did like this one. I did like the D 47. We had a minty. We both noted a minty thing. We both talked about it, how it had like a cooling sensation on the palate. This, there was like not, 
I, I thought it was boring. This one was really low. This one was very flat. And you know, even tasting it again, as Carlos talked about cotton, and my brain was like, I got to try it again. I don't know. It feels very um, bland. I think that's the key word for me there. Mm -hmm. Very bland. Which is, I don't know that that's true of all brews with D47. Obviously, there are some great ones that come out, but mm -hmm. this one did not. We have a grand finale. Now, BC loves this yeast. My favorite yeast, for sure. Number 16 is the Omega Bonanza. I have some of that so, in the fridge. So for this one, uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was in the running for my top four, but it was like number five, and it'll be number five for me. Uh, I got on a nose spices, zestiness, and a little bit of woodiness. Uh, and then for the taste, I got peat, citrus peel, floral, floral, and slight banana. Yeah, this is another one that I put the great candy thing on. But I also, I smell, it was floral. I got some floral notes. And for flavor, I'm just going to read it straight off. I said it had a higher acidity, it was smooth, velvety, and almost Chardonnay-like. Mm. Yeah, I think those are, are good descriptions of, better descriptions than what I wrote. Um, but yeah, there's a, I didn't identify banana, but the, a little bit of fruitiness in there. Um, but otherwise, my, my, my uh, notes are similar to what Carlos and Larry said. Yeah. I did like this one too. I don't have a lot to add. I didn't apparently like it very much but i don't have a lot to add to that. I, I got some booziness in the nose on it we got i got like a baking spicy kind of vibe with this one which is interesting like a dark like phenolic yeah probably if you know um what's should, funny about this one phenolics given this the yeast. right it, it, so bc used this one and he would had a terrible time with it i had a terrible time with it after the shootout like it, the original shootout like it was not good so for it to not be the lowest of the totem pole is interesting <laughs> yeah you know in fact i have a i compiled it and i'll show it right now on screen but i compiled all the total scores and i'll share it with you guys after this but of my top view and the bonanza was the lowest was the worst and it, it didn't fall to the very bottom for me at least for this uh, speaking of top view um let's go ahead and i want I think you guys hopefully have it prepared. Um, tell me your top four mead yeast or yeast in general. <laughs> Not in general, of <laughs> this test. <laughs> <laughs> of all time. Of all time. <laughs> Carlos, so, why don't you start us off? So my top four I, was number two, uh, Red, Red Star Suvi. Uh, Is that number, number one? Six. Is this going first place or... Oh, if we're going first place, uh, okay. Actually, number seven was my favorite. <laughs> okay. So that was my favorite. You know, uh, I thought the mouthfeel was there, like just maybe a little bit of acidity would have totally rounded it out. But it was, yeah, it was my favorite overall. Uh, and then number two, uh, or my second, but it was number six, which okay. was uh, Omega Sundew, which that's the one that had the starburst smell to it. Uh huh. And then from that one. Uh, 10 and then number two okay and uh so number 10 was the i gotta look back at my notes number 10 was the premier blanc. premier blanc number two was the cuvee so you're a red star fanboy as well it sounds like <laughs> honestly i've never used red star to be honest so uh, i can't say your name to that <laughs> That's, i was just teasing you um all right uh larry what were your top views? so my top one ended up being six which is sundew Oh. And I remember specifically my reasoning for it was it was just different. And after tasting 16 meads, different is what I wanted. <laughs> um, and then my second one was actually <laughs> my, my second one um, you're going to disagree with because it was 16. It was the Bonanza. Whoa. So I had both of the Omega yeast in, in my top four. Um, and then one, which is RC212, was number three. And then okay. five was the last one, which is Premier Rouge. So uh, what was 12 again? 12 was the Mangrove Jacks and then Premier Rouge. Fry. Okay. Um, Matthew. So I didn't rank my top four, but they were um, K1V1116, USO5, um, the Red Star Premier Blanc, okay. and MO5. 
And I'm going to give an honorable mention to Sundu. I had top five written down, but I feel like the Sundu is so different. You really need to say it's yeah. its own thing. But, I, you know, I had this kind of um, bias against it sort of as like a gimmick yeast or something. And I think after trying it, I would be, you know, I could actually imagine using it in, in some sort of, uh, you know, hydromel or something fun. Mm -hmm. I can confirm it's nice in a hydromel. <laughs> BC, what were your top top few i only really cared about my top one and two right my top three and four i just kind of chose because i had notes out to the side uh-huh uh, but 13 was my number one then seven three and one so yours were list them off real fast 13 uh-huh so that was the uso4 yeah seven which was wbo6 uh-huh three it which is K1V and one, which was RC212. Uh, I don't so really feel passionately about any of them. We agreed on our number one, though, because number, number 13, or 13 for me was number one, which was the SO4. Uh, then 12, which was interesting, made it up there. I don't think, actually, Larry said, oh, Larry and Matthew. Yeah, I had it. I think you actually got, got that one wrong. Oh. Me. Um, what did you say? What was your third? My third one was one. Oh, I heard. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. So, uh, Matthew had it in his fourth place, the MO five. I had it in my second place. And then third place for me was the WBO six. And number four was the Blanc, which was number 10. It seems like just looking at these numbers. So number seven, WBO six made most of our top, um, at least a couple of us are top few. Same thing for the Blanc. Um, and I don't know about the SO4. It only made a few. So we kind of are scattered. I'll put a grand, more grand total of like voting up here, as people can see. But uh, obviously, yeasts are so different. I think that's the grand point of this video um, is, is you can get so many different things from yeast, mm -hmm. which as um, as Carlos said earlier, these are all orange blossom honey. And 12 of the 16 came from the exact same floral source and four of the other four came from the other floral source that I used. So they're pretty darn similar and um, they have varying age. So that's not fixable by any means, but I really enjoyed this test. And uh, I kind of mentioned it in the beginning of, of this video and that I'm gonna do a more composite 16 all at once brews um because i know there are some people who are going to scream in the comments about how these are going to be different ages and they're going to find all of the the mm -hmm. flaws in this video so uh, but i appreciate you guys taking your time and helping me with the tasting and um picking up leaky hot sauce bottles of mead that apparently I, I learned that lesson don't trust um hot sauce bottles for uh shipping mead <laughs> shout out to those people doing that <laughs> But this has been fun. Thank you guys. Shout out to the UPS driver. <laughs> oh, so the really fun thing is the people that are going to give you problems for not doing them all at the same time won't have watched long enough to hear you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they're still experts. They, yeah. they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but seriously, thank you guys for your time. And I know that um, as BC talked about palate fatigue. It's true. It's a real thing. When you taste test stuff so quickly and you're trying to do it in a way that's not just like enjoying your your curves light on your mm -hmm. porch, you know, that's a little bit of a different kind of experience. So that's real. I was in trying to dig around for saltines and all I could find was graham crackers. Didn't seem to be <laughs> and we almost did. Right choice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thank you guys for your help. Um, I want to highlight doing the most uh, who's right next to me and his YouTube channel. And also highlight Texas Longhouse Mead, which is Carlos, who is down below. And then all of these guys are in the discords, both myself and doing the most discord. You can come and chat with us about uh, various topics, including this one, but uh, it's been a lot of fun and we'll see you again in the future. So thanks.